We've got a damning Twitter thread from the first chief business officer at WhatsApp talking about all the reasons why they should not have sold WhatsApp to Facebook. More action going after Zuck, former chief business officer at WhatsApp on Twitter, why he regrets negotiating the sale of WhatsApp to Facebook. And what did Facebook do where they basically went back on the terms of the deal? So he says, I helped negotiate the $22 billion sale to Facebook. Today, I regret it. Here's where things went wrong. WhatsApp was founded in 2009. This guy joined in 2011. In 2012 and 2013, Zuckerberg tried to buy WhatsApp and they declined. Then in 2014, Zuckerberg approached them again, second time, with an offer that made it look like a partnership rather than you know a controlling acquisition in the sense that he said, hey, we will have full support for end-to-end -end encryption. That has now gone away. No ads ever, ever. That has now also gone away. Complete independence on product decisions. It's gone away. Board seat for Jan on Facebook's board. Our own office, right? They have their own offices in Silicon Valley and other deal points, right? And then he goes on to say, if you use WhatsApp in the early days, what made the app very special was international communication. Right? You can communicate with family and, and friends in multiple countries. WhatsApp was a way to stay connected without paying long distance SMS or calling fees. And he has a, a great little image here of one of the co-founders, Brian, their raison d'etre, no ads, no games, no gimmicks. And boy, uh, did that get torn up. All WhatsApp did in the original days to make money and they actually made a lot of money. That was the crazy thing. WhatsApp was making a bunch of money. All they would do is charge you a dollar. They actually made a lot of money um, relatively for a kind of communication app back then. And Facebook said they supported our mission and vision uh, right around no ads and end-to-end -end communication and all these kinds of things. As we began talking through the acquisition, it made our stance very clear. No mining of user data, no ads ever, no cross-platform tracking. Facebook and their management agreed, and we thought they believed in our vision. Of course, that's not what happened. In 2014, Facebook acquired WhatsApp for $22 billion. And then within three years, <laughs> things started to look very different. In 2018, and f four years after, right as details of the Facebook Cambridge Analytica scandal came out, Brian, one of the co-founders, sent a tweet. He said, it is time. Hashtag delete Facebook. This is the co-founder. Facebook paid $22 billion for his company. A bunch of that in stock, by the way, which is worth even more money. Keep that in mind. $22 billion. Guy's saying within four years of, of them buying his companies, you need to delete this thing. We got to get off Facebook, right? You think he might have known a thing or two? He might have been able to see a thing or two inside the belly of the beast about what was really going on and how much harm Facebook's algorithms were causing, right? Because because they are so focused on ads and invading your privacy, and because the ads then proliferate fake news, incendiary content, right? Because the ads need to maximize engagement. We've had um, actually Facebook's first director of monetization on the show. He did that documentary uh, on Netflix. Go check out our interview with him. So the ads just need to peddle as much engagement as possible. So the algorithms are geared to peddle to you the most triggering content, irrespective of if it's real or fake. The fake stuff is probably more triggering, more exacerbating, more incendiary. So that stuff gets pushed even more. Then they suck down all this information on what you're doing. They invade all your privacy. They sell that data off to make more money, right? And this guy, Brian, clearly saw what was going on and said, oh my God, this is, <laughs> this is not what we signed up for. And then saw the writing on the wall that they were going to bring all of this business model to WhatsApp and pollute and kind of uh, tarnish his baby, right? His company, which he had sold. Today, WhatsApp is Facebook's second largest platform, even bigger than Instagram or Facebook Messenger. But it's a shadow of the product we poured our hearts into and wanted to build for the world. And I am not the only one who regrets that it became part of Facebook when it did. Tech companies need to admit when they have done wrong. Nobody knew in the beginning that Facebook would become a Frankenstein monster that devoured user data and spat out dirty money. We didn't either. 
In order for the tech ecosystem to evolve, we need to talk about how perverse business models cause, cause well-intentioned product service, services and ideas to go wrong. And where do we go from here? Powerful stuff. Uh, props to this guy, Neeraj Ajora. He started a company to try and combat this called Halo App. You can go check that out. But that was really interesting. Again, another insider, another reaffirming point of, of, of uh, opinion and data points on all the things that are going wrong with big tech monopolies, especially these big tech content platform monopolies in particular. If you like this video, go check out our interview with Tim Kendall. He was Facebook's first director of monetization, right? He's the guy who did the documentary on, on Netflix about this. Great interview with him. And of course, follow us on Gab because YouTube is a devil.